Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the stories. I still can't believe the drama I've been dealing with since moving to this neighborhood with an HOA three years ago. I've always tried to mind my own business but it seems like there's always something going on. The latest issue is with the HOA president, who's been taking it upon himself to make up rules as he goes along. A few weeks ago, I decided to have a yard sale. The garage was bursting with stuff we didn't need anymore, and it seemed like a perfect way to declutter and make a few bucks. I put up a sign at the front of the neighborhood to advertise it. I didn't think twice about it, since I've seen plenty of other yard sale signs in the neighborhood before. But apparently the HOA president had a problem with it. Saturday morning, just as I was arranging items on tables in the driveway, the doorbell rang. I was greeted by the stern face of Mr. Wilson, the self-appointed guardian of the neighborhood. He was holding my sign. Good morning, I said, trying to be friendly despite the sinking feeling in my stomach. Good morning, he replied curtly. I'm afraid you can't have this sign up. The rules are changing, and we can't have yard sales anymore. I was furious. What do you mean the rules are changing, since when? No one mentioned anything about this, he shrugged. It's for the good of the community. Yard sales bring in too much outside traffic and can cause issues. I've decided it's best if we stop them altogether, without another word. He turned and walked away, leaving me standing there, stunned and fuming. Not only did he take it upon himself to remove my property, but he also claimed that the rules were changing without even notifying the rest of the neighborhood. That afternoon after the yard sale was over, I reached out to Mr. Wilson multiple times to ask about the new rules and why my sign was removed, but he ignored me. I sent emails, left voicemails and even tried to catch him when he was out for his evening walk, but he always brushed me off or pretended not to see me, to make matters worse, since then, I've seen multiple yard sales in the neighborhood, and the signs have been left alone, it's like Mr. Wilson is making up rules as he goes along and only enforcing them when it suits him. Last weekend, the Johnsons had a huge yard sale, and their sign stayed up all day without any issues. I was so frustrated that I decided to take matters into my own hands. I deducted the cost of the yard sale sign from my monthly HOA payment, figuring that if the HOA president was going to make up rules, I could make up my own way of dealing with it. Big mistake. The next week, I received a message on Facebook from Mr. Wilson, but not to apologize or explain the new rules. No, he sent me a terse message saying that my payment was now late, and that I would be charged late fees. I was shocked. I had no idea that I was supposed to pay late fees, and I certainly hadn't received any notification about it. I tried to reach out to him again, but my messages went unanswered. I even called the HOA office, but they said everything had to go through Mr. Wilson. I've tried to reach out to the HOA president and the rest of the board multiple times since then, but I've been ignored. I've sent emails, left voicemails, and even tried to attend a board meeting, but no one will respond to me. It's like they're trying to avoid dealing with the issue altogether. I've paid my dues since then, but I'm still fuming about the whole situation. How can an HOA president just make up rules and enforce them selectively? And how can they charge me late fees without even notifying me? I've tried to talk to my neighbors about it, but no one seems to want to get involved. They all just shrug and say that Mr. Wilson is a good guy who's just trying to keep the neighborhood looking nice. But I know that's not true. He's abusing his power and taking advantage of his position. In my frustration, I turned to the internet for advice. I found plenty of online forums and reviews from other homeowners in the neighborhood who've had similar issues. It's clear that Mr. Wilson is a bully who's more interested in exerting his power than in serving the community. One night, as I was reading through yet another horror story about Mr. Wilson, my husband Mike suggested we document everything and consider legal action. He's usually the calm one. But even he was fed up. We've got to stand up to this guy. We can't let him push us around, he said. I started keeping a detailed record of every interaction, every ignored email, every unjustified late fee. I even took photos of the yard sale signs that mysteriously stayed up while mine was confiscated. It was a painstaking process, but it felt good to be doing something about the situation. I also reached out to the state's homeowner association office. I wasn't sure what they could do, but I hoped they might offer some guidance or at least listen to my complaints. The representative I spoke with was sympathetic and suggested I file a formal complaint, which I did immediately. 
Meanwhile, I continued to live my life, albeit with a simmering anger that wouldn't quite go away, every time I saw Mr. Wilson's smug face at a neighborhood event or on his daily walks. It reminded me of the injustice. I couldn't believe that someone in a position of authority could behave so arbitrarily, and get away with it. Then came the final straw. One morning, I found a notice in my mailbox. It was from the HOA, stating that I was being fined for unauthorized modifications to my property. The modification in question? A small bird feeder I had put up in my backyard. That was it. I was done playing nice. I called a lawyer who specialized in HOA disputes and set up a consultation. I laid out all the evidence I had collected, and he agreed that I had a strong case. We'll get this sorted out, he assured me. HOAs have rules, but they also have to follow them. The process was slow and stressful. There were meetings and letters back and forth, but I refused to back down. Throughout it all, Mr. Wilson remained as uncooperative as ever, but having a lawyer involved seemed to make him a bit more cautious. Finally, after months of battling, we reached a resolution. The state's homeowner association office reviewed my case and found that Mr. Wilson had indeed overstepped his authority on multiple occasions. They issued a reprimand and ordered the HOA to reimburse me for the unjust late fees and the cost of the yard sale sign. It wasn't a perfect victory, but it felt good to stand up for myself and win. The HOA board was also required to hold a community meeting to discuss the proper procedures for rule changes and enforcement. It was a small step toward transparency and fairness, but it was a step nonetheless. Since then, things have been quieter. Mr. Wilson still struts around like he owns the place, but he seems to be more cautious about enforcing rules. I'm still not sure what the future holds for this neighborhood and its HOA, but I'm determined to stay vigilant. I've learned a lot from this ordeal. I've learned that it's important to stand up for your rights, even when it feels like the odds are stacked against you. I've learned that sometimes you have to be your own advocate because no one else will do it for you. And I've learned that a little bit of persistence and a lot of documentation can go a long way. I'm going to keep fighting for what's right, even if it means going to court again. I'm not going to let some power-hungry HOA president bully me into submission. This isn't over yet, not by a long shot. A few things sound fishy here. The president doesn't have the power to arbitrarily change the CCNRs. You need to read your documents, and it will say what it takes to change or add to that document, usually a quorum with something like 90% of the members voting, but each document is different. As far as cutting the grass, GA has made it a requirement that the HOA take reasonable steps to stop fines from getting out of control. One of those steps is to cut people's grass and charge them for that service versus at $25 per $50. Whatever your daily fine amount is, you can Google search Deer Lake Community HOA and find more info about that. Removing your sign may technically have been legal for him to do. Once again, you'll need to read your CC and R's to determine if you needed to get permission to put up a sign. Late fees for the amount you deducted are something they have the power to do. Depending on your CC and R's will tell you the late fee and fine schedule, i.e. you owe 10% every month or year, etc. However, they are required to notify you and give you a debt notification if this is the case. Reach out again via email with read receipt or certified mail. That part is to protect you. Ask for clarification on the changes and the supposed late fee. Also ask for reimbursement or that your sign be returned to you. This will help you if they decided to proceed with a lien foreclosure on your house over the late fees. There should be other members of the board to reach out to as well. Find out who they are, and start asking around about the questions you have. I'm not a lawyer, so if they do start messing with you regarding these fees, you might want to talk to a HOA attorney just so you can decide if it's worth it to fight or not. First, always 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 pay your dues. Never 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 withhold your payments, that's playing a stupid game, and the HOA is well within their right to fine you for late payments, even moving to lien. Pay it off now, with that said, you have a rogue president. He can make up rules on the fly. He is one of X members of the board. The board has equal votes and processes have to be followed. Until rules change, the board can only enforce existing rules. So, if you have an issue and are getting a formal violation, fine, contest it. You have a case of selective enforcement. Don't respond to him via Facebook Messenger. Send communications certified mail to the board in total rather than him as an individual. Go to a board meeting, use your time to concisely make your point. Maybe the rest of the board is not aware of his behavior.
After years of happily grilling on our front patio, the HOA has decided to switch to a new insurance provider, which expressly forbids all forms of grilling. Having both a gas and charcoal grill has been a staple in our meal preparation routine. We love grilling a variety of meats and veggies to have ready for the rest of the week. However, our grilling days may be coming to an abrupt end due to some strict rules from the Homeowners Association, HOA. They've informed us that storing the grills in the garage or on the patio is a violation. It's frustrating because for us, grilling isn't just a weekend activity. It's a way of life. But now we're faced with the prospect of having to completely get rid of both grills. The idea of not being able to grill feels like a significant loss of freedom, especially when it comes to meal prep. However, upon closer examination of the HOA rules, there's a bit of a loophole. They did mention that grilling is allowed as long as the grill isn't under an overhang and is 10 feet away from any building. This got me thinking about malicious compliance. While they may not want us to have our grills on the patio or in the garage, there's nothing prohibiting us from grilling elsewhere on the property. I'm considering marking off a 10-foot boundary into the alley behind our house and grilling there this summer. It might involve some extra effort with a tape measure, but if that's what it takes to stick it to the HOA, then so be it. It's frustrating to feel like we're being nitpicked over something as simple as grilling, especially when we're just trying to enjoy our meals and our home. The HOA's strict enforcement of these rules feels oppressive and it's tempting to push back in any way we can. After all, what harm does it do to have our grills neatly stored in our garage or on our patio? It's not like we're causing any disruption or eyesores to the neighborhood. It's moments like these that make me question the purpose of the HOA and their seemingly arbitrary regulations. But for now, I'll play by their rules with a bit of creative interpretation and F the HOA. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.